Hello everyone, my name is uh, Nigel Brankin and uh, I uh, just wanted to follow up on a Facebook post of mine yesterday where um, my wife Trish and I had been driving in uh, Berea and come across a lady who was about to be arrested by the police um, for um, what seemed quite spurious kind of conditions. She had a certified copy of her passport and of her visa and the police were about to put him in the back of the van and arrest her. And we've heard so many stories um, of what then happens after people being arrested, of them being bribed. Following on that story, my friend Wellington actually works with us. He's, uh, he works on, with, our ref, with our refugee project and is helping to, to assist refugees around Joburg. Um, had a story of his arrest just uh, a few weeks ago. So I thought, Wellington, do you think uh, you could tell me what actually happened? Yes, yeah. Um, um, I was arrested um, a couple of weeks, of weeks ago um, because uh, I didn't get my ID. But uh, the way the police arrested me, that was not in a good way because they just came and grabbed me. Yeah. You know, these policemen were in um, uh, simple clothes, they were not in uniform. So they just came and grabbed me in the street. They grabbed you from behind? Yes, from Held behind. Held onto your belt and pulled you, and and pulled me. you down. So I wanted to fight by that age that, uh, who is this one who is grabbing me? But he told me that he's a policeman. Mm -hmm. And then I asked him to uh, identify himself, but uh, he couldn't do that. But the only way he can say is, just, let's go to the truck, where is your ID? I couldn't get even uh, a chance to explain my issue to him that I didn't have my ID, but can I call somebody? He couldn't give that chance to me. So I had to um, uh, uh, go to the truck. He puts me in the truck. And then um, I had to call my friend to bring my arm. Um, you had your cell phone with you, fortunately. Yes, yes, I have my cell phone with me. And I had to call my friend to bring my, my, my ID. Your passport. My passport, actually. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then within 10 minutes, the passport came. Um, the truck was still parked in the, the same place. The truck was uh, still parked in the same place. How many people were in the truck? Uh, plus and minus 20 people were there. And so there was one of those big trucks? Big trucks, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, he handed over the passport to me and then I have to give it to the police and then they released me. So the guy who arrested me was um, still standing next to the truck and then I told him that uh, I was not happy the way uh, he arrested me. Actually, he harassed me. So I'm not quite happy about it. I had to, to leave them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and um, tell me, so is this quite a regular occurrence with foreign nationals in the country? Yes, um, actually, yeah, that's what what's really happening in, in Jobek yeah. uh, on daily basis mostly it happens uh, weekends uh, it's not quite safe to walk weekends because of the police around because whenever you are you have to carry something for the police if and you don't live how hospital. many times have you been arrested uh, I think it's the second time so the second time yes. you've been arrested how long have you been in South Africa uh, now I think it's more than eight years now so in eight years you've been arrested twice. twice yeah. They've released you twice. twice yes. And and I've actually got a copy of your I've got your passport here. And I don't know if I can just bring it a little bit closer and you can just see the little edges of this passport that are really tattered and um, quite uh, quite bad. And the reason that they're so bad, w what is the reason that your passport's not looked after? <laughs> yeah, you see the reason why like my passport, why it looks like this, um I had to carry my passport on a daily basis in Jobbik. Mm -hmm. You know, if I would carry a certified uh, copy of my passport, whenever I produce the police in the street, they don't uh, take it seriously. They will ask for the uh, original document. So yeah. I have to carry it on a daily basis with me in my pocket. So you find that it will get uh, the way it looks. Yeah, like. the way it looks. You know? and, and here, this is your photo. Yes. And then if I look over here, there is a copy here of your of your work permit, which expires on the thirty first of December, twenty seventeen. So you've got a valid work permit, yes, yeah. and you essentially are legally in South That's Africa, Africa yes. but you you're facing harassment. Yes, what, what do foreigners feel about this constant harassment by the police? Um, um, you know, this is not a comfortable like um, environment at this stage in Joburg in mm. terms of the police. You know, uh, whenever the foreign nationals see a truck for a police or a van for police, they have to run away. Mm. Instead of feeling that safe, you yeah. know, they're just feeling out of it because, you know, they're just after something. They're not um, they're on duty of bribes, actually. Yeah. They're not on their duty of doing uh, exactly their uh, responsible duties. 
And that's now we've both heard many stories of what typically would happen once a person is arrested. So typically what happens uh, is you get put into the back of the truck if you're not unable to bring your, your documents with you. Then what happens, uh, the police start asking for a bribe. What is the first kind of amount that they ask for? Yeah, they will start asking for 200 rands. Yeah, and they ask it in the form of, um, you want, uh, we want something. And yeah. they talk about something like, we want something for a cool drink yeah. or, or something to that effect. And, uh, and if you don't bring it, then they take you to the police cells. And sometimes at the police cells, you can bring money again yeah. and they ask for more. And then um, if you don't bring it, then they do take you to... So to why India. do you think that they chose you? How did they identify that you're a foreign national? You know, I'm not quite so sure how did they identify me exactly uh, that I'm a foreign national. Maybe is that maybe I was not driving or, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe I'm black. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I don't think... It, I don't see it happening to whites in the inner mm. city being uh, stopped in that office. I've never in my life no. been asked for my passport. <laughs> um, yeah. I suppose this is an example of privilege, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 is, it is when you start to deconstruct this, this is the narrative of, of, of privilege and racism that is still intact and xen layered with xenophobia as well. Mm. Wellington, thank you for, for sharing your story. I uh, really appreciate all the work that you're doing in the city and um, I'm really sorry that South Africans are treating you so badly. Thanks, thanks. Uh.